Okay, hello everyone. How are you today? It's Kay. So uh, thank you for joining another live stream today. So this is the 24th of March 2022 on Thursday. So we will check charts together and see what's happening by Ichimoku Kinko Hyo. So yeah, let me get ready here. I just finished the appointment and just sit on the desk right now. So yeah, let me get ready now. Okay, but it looks like the markets are active now, which is good news. I think um, this uptrend on these pairs could be continuous. So um, we can continue to monitor charts and see what might happen. But uh, yeah, let me quickly um, review some of the charts together now. Okay. So here we go. All right. Okay, I think it's ready now. So let me switch the screen. Okay. So uh, once again, welcome to this uh, another live stream today. This is Thursday, twenty second of twenty uh, fourth of March. This is toward the month end already. Time flies. This is almost the end of March. So. Uh, yeah, let's see. Um, let's see who's here first. Uh, Sorosh. Oh yeah, the there was something wrong with the live stream yesterday, but today I hope it's okay. I don't see any any error messages right now, so I think it's okay now. It's working okay now. All right. And yeah, Anis and Lukman, Rajan and Marcus, Mahardika. And Emeka, TikTok, Alex, Arnold, and Johnny K, Peter, Asif, Ek Hargao, and uh, Richard, Ali, and Oscar. Thank you for joining, everybody. Great to see you here. So, um, let me see. Let me first, um, quickly, as a disclaimer for this live stream, as usual, I mentioned uh, all this information is basically for educational purposes only. So when you trace, please do at your own risk. And also, since this is live stream, if you can please follow the rules and guidelines in the chat, that will be great. And also, recently, there are many scammers out there using my name and creating fake accounts and scamming people. So just be careful. I don't do Telegram or Instagram, Facebook. I never send direct messages on SNS. So uh, please be careful. So, yeah, let's see, let's see. All right, I see people keep joining here now. Thank you for joining. Great to see you. All right. Yeah, live stream looks healthy now. Yeah, it's working great. So, yeah, I really don't know what happened yesterday. But today, uh, looks like it's stable. Yeah, but in case if there's any issues, please let me know in the chat. Then I will look into it. All right, Val and uh, Augustine Butha and T2, Jay Wise, John On and John Hera, William and Toko. Good to see you. Thank you for joining, everybody. All right, so let me switch to, tr switch to trading view. Here. are. And um, so I'm actually on the USJPY. We're running some profits, I guess, uh, right now. Hold on. I bought USJPY today at uh, the price level of uh, 121.417 so still holding the trade i'm trading the profits on usd jpy but looks like the uh, you know jpy is strong uh, very weak today so we see another uh trends on usd jpy and i was also looking for the trading edge on cad jpy so if you took one of these pairs, either USDJPY or CADJPY, then you must be uh, making profits by now. But uh, other than that, let me check some um, information. So let me first look at the strength chart as of now and see which one is strong, which one is weak at this moment. So let me switch it to trading, uh, switch to currency strength chart. And refresh the page. 
Usually when I open, it's kind of blank and I refresh and I can show the latest strength chart. So according to this right now, um, CAD is very strong and JPY is very weak. So at a glance, we know that CAD JPY is the most volatile market, the strongest uptrend. And the second strongest one is um, AUD JPY. So AUD JPY must be trending up and then USD JPY is also trending up. So first, let me look into these three pairs. Uh, once again, CAD JPY and USD JPY and uh, USD JPY and AUD JPY. Yeah, so these three pairs, we'll look into it. Oh, I've seen many comments about uh, making profits on USD JPY and AUD JPY. That's good, yes. If you follow my strategy, and if you follow the trend directions, you should be making profits today. In the month of March, it was very active. And it, I think, based on my experience for the last eight or nine years of my trading experience, this month is unusual. In Forex, it's unusually trending up or down. So this is when trend follow strategy works the best. So, um, so first, let me talk about the CADJPY. This is the strongest market at the moment. And uh, you can see that this is in the forward chart. But if you look at the daily time frame, you see this is strongly bullish. And in terms of this CADJPY, I said that the Kumo is too, very thin, so it may retrace backwards. So um, that's why I put this as a low priority. But uh, we can still follow the flower chart because in the flower chart, it's stable Kumo here. So instead of taking the daily time frame, we can follow the four hour chart direction. So right now, the market has been above the Tenkan Sen, which is, which is actually showing the strongest market. Whenever you see the market above Tenkan Sen and keeps going up this way, this is the strongest market, stable market. And the stability is actually captured by this uh, Kumo thickness. If you see the Kumo th thick like this and long after the previous Kumo twist, this is a strong bullish trend. And Chikou Span is also nice and above candles, so this is a stable uptrend confirmation. So we can still continue to follow the flower chart uptrend in CADJPY. And obviously, one hour is uptrending because it renews higher now. One hour is uptrending. And in the five minute chart, this is what I usually look for an entry chance in the five minute chart. And then uh, if I look at it, oh, it looks like five minute chart is now, you know, shooting up all the way. So uh, I think uh, we better wait for the retracement. And you see, in this case, stochastics is you know kind of retracing backwards the blue line is retracing backwards so the market is losing its uptrend right now if, if i see this at a glance so it may pull back so i in this case i wait for the pullback and push back to buy i would wait for the next gold cross of stochastics or wait for the next pushback you know fibonacci bounce or a counter trend line breakout or if it keeps retracing backwards, then a Bollinger Bands may squeeze and that might be another confirmation to buy. Because once it expands, uh, it tends to go towards a major direction like this way. So yeah, CADJPY is nicely bullish, but uh, right now I would still stay away from this one. Wait for the retracement. But uh, if you just keep going up, then you know you can you can just stay away, keep staying away and focus on other JPY pairs. So in the next one I will look at is the USD JPY. Um, USD JPY in the daily chart, this one looks better Kumo than the CAD JPY. If we can compare again, uh, let me split the window into two. And on the left, I put the USD JPY. So this is, the Kumo looks like this. And on the, on the right, let me put the CADJPY. And if you compare these um, two Kumo, 
in the same time frame, you see the CADJPY Kumul still looks very thin, much thinner than the USDJPY. So that means uh, USDJPY uh, has a stable uptrend in the long term than CADJPY. So I still prefer to monitor the USDJPY. But we had another trending pair, which was uh, AUDJPY. So let me replace uh, USDJPY, or sorry, CADJPY to AUDJPY and look at the Kumo. All right, so if you look at the AUDJPY Kumo, this one is also looks healthy, not too thin, not too thin. So if I see these, you know, uh, three pairs trending at the same time, then um, I would most likely take either AUDJPY or USDJPY to trade. In the long term, it should be continuously moving up on this, uh, based on this uh, daily time frame. So um, yeah, so let me look into the USDJPY first. So I will put it back into just one screen. So uh, let me see. I go down to the one hour time frame. And um, yeah, so the market has been bullish now. It just broke the resistance uh, about one hour ago. And now still bullish now. Kumo has been stably bullish too. And a Chikou span above candles. And Kijun Sen is pointing upwards. And this is a nice confirmation to look for the buy chance continuously. And then I go down to the five minute chart. And in fact, uh, this uh, red vertical line is where exactly I took the buy. It was uh, 121.42, I took the buy here. So let me explain how I took that buy. I got these questions also. So uh, I took this buy here, and that's, that's because I took this uh, multiple confirmations. I took first this uh, when I see the retracement and on this bullish candlestick, you know, I saw that this is the beginning of the new uptrend in the five minute chart because higher time frames were bullish. In the four hour chart was bullish, a one hour chart was also bullish. So probability wise, in the five minute chart, um, it tends to break the resistance and goes up towards major direction because market you know usually follows higher time frame direction so that's one of the confirmations uh, I, when i saw this bu bullish candle that was a you know sign of the continuous uptrend and then uh, also i saw that the, the market actually came within the bollinger bands deviation 1 2 and that was my second confirmation because, uh, you know, Bollinger Band between one and two deviations is like, a, like a, you know, this is like a stream, a stream uptrend in, in the river, so to speak. So when the market comes into the area between deviation one and two, it's like a stream. So the market tends to go up very fast. So this is what I call the band walking. And uh, I took that also as another confirmation and I also watched this uh, little doji candle there's a small doji candlestick and the doji candlestick broke bullish for a major direction this is about the price action let me enlarge the chart and exactly what I see here this is very important also whenever you trade by the price action because uh, let me delete these uh, indicators for now and um, if you see this, there are three dojis, one and two and three dojis. And the previous dojis has been broken against the major direction. So um, the first doji, if you look at this, the next candlestick close became below the previous doji. And this is against the major direction. So you can't take this as a confirmation to buy because once again this is against the major direction 
you have to always take confirmations along with the trend confirmations, trend direction in higher time frame, then most likely that will be true. So I didn't take these doji breaks against major direction, but the third one here, this was exactly what I was waiting for. The market broke the doji towards the bullish direction, and that was exactly my entry confirmation too. So once so when I monitored the chart, it didn't break the resistance yet. The resistance in 5-minute chart at that time was here, but um, it didn't break. So, but before the breakout happens, I like to buy so that once a market breaks, it goes very fast like this. But to expect the breakout for a major direction in the 5-minute chart, you have to capture this kind of you know, indications by the price actions or the indicator confirmations or, um, you know, any sort of confirmations like this. This is what I call the trading edge. We have to always look for an edge to buy or edge to sell. So here, I exactly kept the edge and that's why I took the buy. And uh, afterwards, as a result, it went bullish. But uh, it, it may have been retraced backwards too. So once it retraces backwards, what I was thinking in my head was, if the market creates double top and breaks neckline, that will, that will be my exit timing. Because it violates the previous doji. And if the doji has been broken bearish as original confirmation, then I will most likely exit in the 5 minute chart. And that's why uh, my exits are very quick. I don't keep holding the market uh, retraces until the market hit the stop loss. My original stop loss was 22 pips below, so that was around here. I took the stop loss here. And uh, so if I exit by this double top, reverse confirmation, a neckline break of the, on the 5 minute chart, uh, I usually take 2% risk to stop loss. 2%. And uh, this is my SL, this is my buy. If I exit here, that will be less than 1% drawdown, which is acceptable for myself. This is very small drawdowns. But uh, still, I buy here and expect the market goes towards major direction because this was an edge. So trading is all about the probability. And we can see the future, but we can analyze a future like this by price actions, multiple time frames, and uh, you can you only take trades on these high probability edges so that uh, you know overall trades should be profitable. You might have some losses along the way, but uh, these losses should be very small because you are uh, trading on the edges after all. And uh, if it reverses, simply you exit with no emotion. So, um, yeah, I, because I got this uh, questions like, how, why do you take that stop loss so tight? Like 20 pips stop loss is tight, like 30 pips stop loss, isn't it too tight? You know, I got these questions, but uh, this is actually one of the reasons why I like to have the tight stop loss. Um, the other reason why I want to have the tight stop loss is that uh, it's time efficient. And what I mean by time efficient is that, uh, you know, if, if the market reverses backwards and breaks a neckline, it happens maybe in about uh, 20 or 30 minutes when it reverses. So I can decide in 30 minutes to exit this trade. But if I have to sit down and wait for like one hour or two hours, to decide whether I exit or not, then it is not time efficient because you are in drawdown. You have been running some losses for a couple of hours and uh, you might not want to take trades on other pairs, other markets. But by exiting quickly, then uh, you can clear a mindset and uh, you can reset your emotion and uh, ready to trade on another pair. And that's why uh, exit quick is very time efficient in that way. So, uh, and also, you know, I put, I put
with that stop loss very tight, as tight as possible, like uh, less than 35 pips usually, because, uh, so that I can go for bigger lot sizing with the same risk to percent. If stop loss is double, let's say in this case, I took 20, 22 pips of stop loss, but let's say if your stop loss is all the way down, like uh, 44 pips, let's say, then I have to, uh, you know, I have to um, take uh, like a double, I have to take, uh, you know, half of a lot size to make it 2% to the 44 pips of a stop loss. I'm taking the same risk, still 2% is my rule for trade, but uh, I have to decrease the lot size. Uh, so even if the market goes towards my direction, my winning profit will be half than taking 22 pips of stop loss. With the same risk so from this reason i prefer to have a tight stop loss so that i can go for bigger lot sizing with the same risk and once the market reverses backwards i can cut the loss very quickly and uh, this is very time efficient very effective more effective trading strategy in terms of risk management so um uh, yeah Sorry, I talk about uh, lots about uh, risk management, but uh, this is, I think, important information. So I just wanted to share uh, today. So, uh, but anyways, uh, behind that logic, uh, I took the buy, and yeah, it happened that the market went back, it went towards my direction without retracing, and that's why I just keep holding the trade. So usually I take two trades, so I took two trades here. And then my original stop loss is here. This was my original stop loss. And once I saw the market runs above 30 pips, so this place, uh, when I measured, it was over 30 pips or exactly on the 30 pips or 31 pips of running profit, then I move the stop loss to break even. Slightly above the position. You have to put the Stop loss slightly above that position in the you know the reason why you know the reason why i put the stop loss slightly above the position if you know then please let me know in the comment i put the stop loss slightly above the position and then so that even if the market retraces backwards you know i can exit with a break even so this was my um break even timing on these two trades so I had two stop losses here. And then I left home. I was meeting one of the Ichimoku members at the mall. And then came back. And then I had another uh, 101 meeting with the GTS member. So in between these two meetings, I looked at the chart. And uh, actually it was while what I was when I was doing the meeting with the GTS member, I saw the market retraced backwards. I saw the small bearish in wave broke the support. So this is when I exited on one of these trades. I exited with a 17 pips profit and exited. But the other stop loss, I kept it at the break even. And the reason is because um, the 4 hour chart was still trending up. The 4 hour chart was still trending up. So I kept holding another stop loss here at the break even because in the forward chart is still bullish and that that means in the five minute chart it may seem to retracing but in the forward chart it's bullish so at some point it should go up in the long term but we never know when it retra it will go up it may go up after the market hit the break even like this or it may go up uh, without hitting the stop loss, without hitting the break even, it may go up. But uh, we cannot know. We don't know. We have no con no control over these situations. But the, since 4-hour chart is too bullish, I kept it at the break even. And if it hit it, I just take it because I don't lose anyways. So no damage for my account. So and um, so afterwards, it just happened that the market go went upwards towards the major direction. So this original stop loss, I mean, this break even was still alive and kept holding 
until now. And the market is going up. And I am running a profit of from here, running profit of uh, 42 pips now. So this is um, how I took the trade and what I am right now. So yeah, I think uh, you know this is my strategy, and I built this strategy by my own. So uh, I think this is something you never heard before. It might be confusing if you're new to my live stream, but uh, this is basically how I trade. So first priority priority is to to risk, you know, to risk management, risk less. Small take a small risk a trade as small as possible and but uh, once the market goes towards major direction you keep holding a trade especially after break even you don't lose psychologically it's safe even the market retraces backwards here like this after 30 pips of running profit um, I don't think I lost these pips you know uh, for some of you I think if the market retraces backwards to break even after running 30 pips, you might think that, oh, I lost 30 pips. But uh, that's an illusion. That's an illusion. The healthy mindset should be non-losing trade. If you don't lose, then you should be happy. You know, uh, the market is not really taking anything from you. So you can, you're, you, have to be, you should be healthy to look for another trading edge. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. So that's right. That's right. Uh, John Hera, movie hero. And uh, yeah, Eger Gao says about uh, the thread. Yes. So I put the break even, you know, I put the stop loss slightly above the position to cover the spread because I'm paying the spread when I take a trade. I pay two or three pips of spread to the broker. So if I put the stop loss exactly on the position, then uh, I will lose two pips or three pips. So technically, it's a loss. But uh, if I put it slightly above, like two or three pips above, then it can cover the spread. And uh, technically, you don't lose. When you buy in Forex, you pay spread. When you sell, you pay spread when you exit. So when I buy, I always make sure to put the stop loss above um, the position. If you sell, you can put the stop loss exactly on the position, that's fine. But to be safer, uh, you better place the stop loss slightly below the position when you sell also. But especially when you buy, you have to put the stop loss slightly above is, uh, is a trick. Important uh, thing. You know, this is only 2 or 3 pips, but uh, if you keep getting break-evens, like 10 break-evens, and that will be 20 or 30 pips of loss, which is quite big. Right? So these small portions, small things uh, are very, very important. Uh, especially if you want to keep trading, small errors can be you know, big in the future if it accumulates over time. So um, yeah, it, this is very important. So now um, I'm actually running uh, about uh, 39, 40 pips in profit. So I moved the stop loss to here, previous low. This was the beginning of the new uptrend. So I moved the stop loss 121.59. 120, and what I'm looking for is, what I'm waiting for is the market breaks higher this way. Once the market breaks, the new high in the 5 minute chart, which is 121.99 for the round number of 122. Excuse me. Then I will move the stop loss to below the previous support in 5, which is 121.81. And I would fix the, um, the 37 pips of profit and keep holding the buy. As it continues to go up, in the four-hour chart basis, but uh, yeah, this is what I basically uh, do every day. So I happen to have positions right now, so I'm just sharing that uh, with everybody. I have the screenshots uh, just in case for the proof. 
So this was my original entry. I took, uh, so once again, if you are joining newly, I am actually buying the USJPY and I took uh, these um, four confirmations basically. When I saw that market, Kawa chart was nicely and healthy uptrend with the Kumo direction and one hour chart was also bullish, close span above candles. And then in five minute chart, I took this um, Fibonacci bounce. Yeah, I sorry, I forgot to say this. Fibonacci bounce I took. And then um, this uh, Doji breakout as second. And third, this is called a counter trend line breakout. Same as a potential future end wave. And then band walking is a fourth confirmation. In this case, I didn't take the stochastics because it's dead crossing. When it's dead crossing, then I just ignore stochastics. So I took these um, four confirmations for entry. And then um, next I took... Uh, this was originally when I took the trade. I took uh, 22 pips of uh, stop loss. Yeah, 22 pips, sorry. 22 pips of stop plus I took for these two positions. And then um, when I run the um, thir uh, 30 pips, when I run 30 pips of profit, then I moved it, moved the stop losses. Originally was here, stop losses to break even. To break even. This is the timing. When I said the break even, this is MT5 platform. I trade by the MT5. And then afterwards, I left the chart. Um, I had the I had the meeting with one of the Ichimoku members at the mall, and then came back, and I was actually a meeting with. Uh, one of the GTS members in Skype. And then, um, okay, where's that? And then I exited. Oh, I think I didn't take the screenshot for the exit on one of, one of these trades. Oh, there you go. Yeah, so this was a screenshot when I exited the trade. So uh, this was. Uh, yeah, so this was when I said the break even. This is break even. And um, I, I just let it go. And the market retraced backwards, but I didn't exit here. Because um, both the 4 hour chart and 1 hour chart were bullish. So I didn't exit. If the market retraces, you know, I would just exit uh, with the break even. And I don't lose. But afterwards, since uh, the market is still trending up in higher time frames, it went up and created range. So the whole time I left, I was leaving the chart, and I came back to home around this time and started my conversation. So this is when I came back to home. I just put home. So during the whole time I left it, so I didn't realize. This uh, retracement, anyways, I didn't realize. After I set the break even, basically I leave chart for a couple of hours. So I left the chart from here to here and came back home and I saw this. So, and as I was speaking with the GCS member, I saw the retracement and five minute chart drop down, broke the support of the previous, uh, you know, support in the five minute chart. Previous double top, double bottom, sorry. Double bottom was broken bearish. And when I saw that, I exited manually. So you see this is a 121.59 or was exactly when I exited the trade. This was my exit. And uh, I left the other stop loss at the break even. And once again, that is because still Higher time frame is bullish, was bullish. So if the market retraces backwards and hit the break even, it's okay because I don't lose once again. So because uh, I know that uh, every time if I if I trade with a break even or win game, then I should be winning over time. Even if 
couple of trades could be break even. If we trace backwards break even, I don't lose. But uh, you know, the market still potentially goes up because higher time frame is bullish. No reason to exit, only the other one. And then here I am now. This is how this is here I am now. So uh so this is a very important mindset, you know, as a trend follower. If you are also a trend follower, then uh, never exit if higher time frame is too bullish. You can exit one of the trades, one of the positions, but the other one, you have to keep at the break even. Otherwise, you can't run huge pips along the way. Like when you exit, it's more like here. If you keep exiting like this in these timings, then uh, you, know, you, can't, you can't run huge profits along the way. You have to monitor chart the whole time and you know you have stress you might have second thoughts you know should i exit or not and it's not really healthy psychologically emotionally so you have to train yourself to let the market you know let the market go without monitoring and then um yeah you can run huge profits over time but in terms of the exit, you have to monitor the chart. You have to monitor the chart because the market may retrace backwards so soon. Like here, um, the market may create double top and it might reverse backwards. And when it breaks the neckline, then it may continue to be bearish. So you have to see this because you are still potentially lose on the trade. But after the break even, nothing to worry about. You just keep holding and holding. And as long as higher time frames do bullish is my mindset. But uh, it, took, it took me at least three years to be able to think like this. And after even three years, uh, you know, I had, I had to train myself. I had to run the Forex tester. I had to trial profits. And the tester and also the real trades uh, to be able to keep holding a trade so yeah i think um you know um at some point i think we have to let the market go and we have to stay away from the chart you know uh when you are trading because uh if you keep watching the chart then uh, you might think should I exit or not? Should I look for another pair to trade? You have these, you know, uh, different minds, different ideas. You might want to change your strategy instead of using one specific uh, strategy. You might think to try the other strategy, and you might change around the strategies, and uh, you might not be so consistent in your trades. So, yeah. Anyways. That's how I am right now, and it's it's about to break the the resistance in the five, which is one twenty two round number. So once it breaks, I will move it to move it to the previous uh, pushback in the five minute and fix that profit. Kush says, to me, break-even feels like a loss. <laughs> yeah. I used to think like that too, yes. I thought break-even is like at least not a profitable, so I thought it's a loss. Especially if it happens like this, after running 30 pips, to the break-even, retrace, and hit the break-even. I thought this is a loss. So th but this is about psychology. Yes, it's about psychology. Let's say I give you $100 for free. I just give you $100, and let's say the $100, uh, let's say it's stolen at the park, let's say, uh, you know, then you might think that you lose $100, but, uh, you know, um, you didn't lose from the beginning anything because you got this $100 for free. So uh, technically, you didn't lose, but uh, emotionally, you feel you lost it. So 
you have to train yourself to have this uh, you know uh, the healthy mindset towards the break even yeah we feel more pain in the losses than the wins it said that we have to have like a double or at least 1.5 times uh, profit uh, than the losses to be break even emotionally let's say I uh, let's say you lose hundred dollars and even if you gain another hundred dollars in a trade on the next trade technically number it's break even but psychologically it's not break even you have to win at least hundred fifty dollars to make it break even psychology psychologically and that's why we all talk about losses and we talk all think about the losses as painful so there's psychological imbalance between losses and wins in terms of emotion so we have to see numbers numbers are everything in forex or any tradings yeah no emotion in numbers yeah psychology is so important yes that's right that's right Oscar says, if the trend keeps uptrending, would you consider a new buy or just keep moving the stop loss? Yeah, I can consider a new buy, yes. But uh, usually, I prefer to let it go unless I see another um, great setup. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm open. I have, I don't lose anymore, so uh, I can look for another trading opportunity okay <clears throat> movie hero says but if you took two trades per once and the market goes opposite direction it loses double stop loss per once so that's why you always took three to four factor to confirmation entry yeah that is true before, I used to trade, I used to take only one confirmation. So coming back to this uh, entry edge topic, like uh, previously, I would only take, let's say, um, Fibonacci bounds for the confirmation. And I tried the Fibonacci confirmation, took the buy, but for some reason, reverse backwards. And I didn't know where to exit. Simply, I thought, I just you know the market retreats backwards but let's hope that it doesn't hit the stop and then it does hit the stop so that was when i took only one confirmation so i was always thinking how to avoid these fake outs like fake signals and then i came up with the idea okay so why not taking the other confirmation so i take fibonacci bounce and then what else I can see? And then I studied the price action, for example, and then I took the price action for another confirmation, like this doji break towards the major direction. I took that as the second confirmation. So the probability, you know, gets better in this way. And then, uh, you know, you may be also be able to take this, uh, the bandwalk confirmation. Before, I used to take only band walk. Every time the market is in between uh, division one, two, I just buy. And the market retraced backwards very fast. And I didn't know reason why. And I didn't know where to exit. But after I took multiple confirmations like this, um, it not only gives me high probability, uh, you know, winning trade, but also uh, I could wait. I could wait to... Uh, analyze I could wait until I enter the market it stops me from entering too soon jumping into market so that was very helpful and also when it comes to exit I know exactly when to exit once these violations once these confirmations are violated that's basically when I exit so I take opposite signals uh, from buying signal as exit uh, confirmation in the five minute chart so uh, and that's how I 
build my strategy like this. So my entries are very precise. I don't enter by emotion. I don't enter just because the market is going up. I don't enter just because the market breaks. I don't enter usually. Um, so, and it gives me confidence and logic behind, which makes me comfortable to trade. Yeah, and for the stop loss, you know, I take two positions and I take two stop losses originally. So I take 1% each. And on two, two positions, I take 2% 2 risk, 1% each. Okay, let me see some other uh, ones. Marcus says, I TP with 33 pips, but I miss out on the 50 pips. The emotion part really is crucial. Yes, that's true. You know, once the BNF, BNF is a great trader in Japan. And uh, he says, even, you know, when you lose, it's painful emotionally because physically you lose. But even if you win, it's painful because after our exit, the market just takes off. And when you see it, you feel you miss a chance. So in trading both ways, when you exit with a loss, when you exit with a profit, both ways, it's painful anyways. That's what he says. But I think that's true. You know, I think that's true. Emotionally, you know, it's all about a psychology game. But uh, the healthy mindset should be, you know, it's okay because tomorrow will come. You will look for another entry chance and simply trade. But never try to win back the losing 50 pips. Never try to do that. Never target the 50 pips on the next trade. Never do that. Egg Hergao says, trading is number games. Don't focus on just one trade. Do a series of 20 trades if winning rate is 70% and winning percentage is bigger than losing percentage. That is consistency. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's all about numbers. All about numbers. Because numbers won't lie. You know, but uh, we can lie to ourselves. We can lie to our emotion. We can think... We can think as we like so uh, we can deceive ourselves in terms of perspective and emotion so the true enemy is ourself not the market okay so i see two comments about two markets uh, one is audjpy at this moment one hour time frame is it okay to enter and the other one is AUD USD and see how you would enter in the five minute chart. Okay, so let me look at these two pairs now. So one is uh, AUD JPY quickly because uh, I will end the live in about five minutes. So let me quickly give you these two analysis and end the live. So AUD JPY um, daily is up, power chart is also up, nice and healthy Kumo. And in one hour, it's also bullish. So I will look for the buy in five. So let me see. If I look at the five minute chart, then oh, there was a nice pushback, I realized. Nice uh, breakout of the resistance. So um, yeah, you can, uh, I think you can buy now. Put the stop loss here at 91.28. If you buy right now, then that will be, let's see. About uh, 40 pips, 41 pips of stop loss. 41 pips of stop loss is a bit too wide for me, so I don't think I will take that. I will prefer to look at other market to be in, so that I can go for higher lot sizing with the same risk. So let me go to uh, AUD USD just to compare. Once again, AUD USD in the daily chart is bullish. Our chart is also bullish and one hour is also bullish nice breakout of the resistance and in the five minute chart let's see okay it's retracing back for us but if we put the stop loss below the previous low that will be 
20 pips, okay. 20 pips of stop loss is okay, 28 pips. So I really prefer to take AUD USD to trade. But at the same time, I have to look at the strings chart. AUD and JPY and USD looks like, uh, yeah, AUD to JPY is more volatile than AUD USD. So in that sense, AUD JPY is better. So I would wait for the pullback on AUD JPY to one of these Fibonacci levels. Then once I confirm the pushback, then I would enter the buy so that I can have you know tighter stop loss. If it's a 23.6 pip bounce, that will be 32 pips of stop loss. If that will be 38.2 percent retracement, that will be 26. 27 pips of stop loss so i prefer to take you know uh i prefer to wait for the discount uh to buy in this case if it takes off then oh well you have to just let it go until you see the next trading edge that's what i think of think of yeah but uh yeah anyways uh yeah that's uh, i guess that's it for today's um live stream Time flies. It's already 50 minutes so far. Okay, so uh, yeah, once again, thank you for joining everyone. I'm sorry I saw many other comments, but I couldn't cover everything. But I hope you learned something new from today's live stream. So um, for those who are Ichimoku members, uh, there will be uh, Ichimoku membership live after this, which happens in about 8 minutes. So I will see you there. But uh, for those who are joining public, I will see you on the next one. So until I see you, either way, please uh, stay healthy and stay safe. And also, stay gold. All right. Matane, everyone. Bye for now. Thank you.